I don't believe he is. We can get to work on that. I appreciate that. All right, and looks like staff is present with the exception of Chief Landon. He is excused. Okay. And City Clerk Renteria. And she is also excused. Very good. Are we making progress? Mr. Deputy Mayor, are you with us? I am with you, Mr. Mayor. Okay. We, we asked a couple of times and we, we didn't get a response from you, so we were assuming you couldn't hear us. So, welcome, sir. I joined with the wrong account, Mr. Mayor. I had to log off and log back in. I understand. All right. Thank you, sir. All right. Do we have someone here this evening to give an invocation? And we do, Mrs. Lindy. I please ask that you please rise for the invocation and remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. Our Father in heaven, we are grateful that we can gather um, with this city council tonight, that the things that they discuss will be pleasing, that they'll be able to work together and do what's best for the city of Sunnyside. And we are grateful that we have people that are trying to do what's best for the interests of the community. And these things we say in the name of Jesus Christ, amen. amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic which stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. You may be seated. First item on the agenda this evening is public comments. Citizens are advised they must limit their remarks to the council to three minutes. Council may refer items to staff to review and or research for presentation at a future council meeting. And do we have anyone signed up or wanting to give public comments this evening? I'm not seeing a thundering herd of people coming up, so I'm going to assume that the answer is no. Item two, consent agenda. Consent agenda consists of the following. Item A, minutes. Approve the minutes of the July 24, 2023 regular meeting. Approve the minutes of the August 7, 2023 workshop meeting. Payroll vouchers. Approve payroll vouchers numbers 119341 through 119351 and wire transfers as listed for $764,246.13 for the period ending on July 25, 2023. Claim vouchers. Approved claim voucher numbers 106948 through 107040 and wire transfers as listed for $440,014.63 for the period ending on July 19, 2023. Approved claim voucher numbers 107041 through 107100 and wire transfers as listed for $334,395.24 for the period ending on July 26, 2023. Approved claim voucher numbers 107101 through 107154 and wire transfers as listed for $440,900.44 with a period on August 12, I'm sorry, August 2, 2023. Council members, is there any item that you wish to remove from the consent agenda? Hearing none, what is the desire of council on this item? Move to approve. I'll second. Motion by Councilor Ripley, second by Councilor Hicks to approve the consent agenda as presented. Is there a debate on this item? And then all in favor of approving the consent agenda as presented, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed no. I also vote aye. The motion passes. Active agenda, item A, North Avenue sidewalk improvements. Consider approving a resolution authorizing the city manager to enter into an agreement with CME Trenching, LLC, to construct the North Avenue sidewalk improvements in the amount of $84,380. Madam city manager. And I will trust my staff with the staff report and make sure that we welcome our new public works director, Raul Sanchez. Thank you. Uh, Turn your mic on. Yeah, it's on. Yeah. So, uh, okay, so thank you. Um, I'll bring you to the project here. So in 2015, Roman Avenue was closed off between North Avenue and Schoon Road. Uh, this closure was due to numerous closed calls at the intersection of Lappin Avenue and Patrick Court within uh, Roman Avenue traffic. 
Um, as part of that closure, the driveway approach for the business of La Paleteria La Norteña, located at 120 Roman Avenue, was relocated to North Avenue. Uh, the city informed the business owner that their driveway approaches would be rebuilt. So this project uh, will construct 185 feet of curb and gutter, 925 square feet of sidewalk along North Avenue, one 30-foot commercial driveway, and two 20-foot residential driveways. 35 tons of asphalt be installed along the new North Avenue curb line and also on the back of sidewalk to complete the driveway approaches. On August 3rd, 2023, city staff opened bids for North Avenue sidewalk improvements and received seven bids. The lowest responsible bidder was CNE Trenching LLC out of Pasco, Washington, with a bid of 84,380,000. ,000. This low bid is approximately 30% above the engineer's estimate of 65,100. HLA engineered has re reviewed and checked the bid proposals of all bidders and recommend the city of Sunnyside to award a construction contract to CNE Trench and LLC uh, in that amount. Um, this project will be funded out of the Transportation Benefit District revenues. So uh, I seek city council for a resolution authorizing city manager to enter into an agreement with CNE Trench and LLC construction uh, to construct the North Avenue sidewalk improvements in the amount of $84,380. Thank you, sir. Council members, any questions? Is this the same company that's doing the Sixth Street sidewalk? No. Further questions or comments? So I have one, this um, additional price over what was estimated at the beginning, can that be attributed to higher fuel costs, uh, petroleum costs that would contribute to that, or what is the reason for that? Uh, the cost overrun generally is uh, in terms of just having a very small contract uh, with this, with any contractors. And then also um, the time of year and how busy everyone is, uh, along with just an increase in material cost across the board. Um, concrete right now is going fairly expensive, and this is predominantly just a concrete project. So it, it is in line with what we are seeing across the board and other bid openings, uh, the highest bid on this particular project was right around 116,000. So we had quite a wide range. Um, there were three low bids though, all within the 84 to $89,000. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Further questions or comments? Hearing none, what is the desire of the council on this item? Move to approve. Second. All right, we got a motion by Councilor Ripley, second by Councilor Hicks to approve the resolution that authorizes the city manager to enter into an agreement with CME Trenching LLC to construct the North Avenue sidewalk improvements in the amount of $84,380. Is there a bid on this item? All in favor of this motion, please signify by saying aye. Aye. I also vote aye. Motion passes. Item B, ordinance to update the schedule of fees and charges in SMC 2.02.020. .02 Consider adopting an ordinance updating the schedule of fees and charges listed in SMC 2.02.020. .02 Madam City Manager. Now we'll turn this over to Ms. Horner for a staff report. Ms. Horner. Good evening, Council and Mayor and Madam City Manager. Um, we went over this change in the workshop uh, last week, but I know, Mr. Mayor, you were not here. So most of these changes are um, are in the garbage section, section eight, and that is in regards to the dumping fees for, for Yakima County going up. Those went up in June, but because we had such a drastic change in our garbage contract and our garbage billing, this year, we kind of wanted to take a wait and see on how it would actually affect um, our billings. And so at this time, we're ready to go ahead and, and request that it's a 2.5% increase, which is significantly lower than what the county increased by, um, I think, close to 7%. So we're still keeping a close eye on this. Um, there's only a few months left in the year. So I think we should have a pretty good idea of exactly where we need to be for 2024 um, at the beginning uh, when we pass that 
that fee schedule for 2024, and then hopefully we'll be able to sit steady um, through the rest of the contract with just the normal um, increases for CPI. The other items in this fee schedule change are in chapter 12 of the municipal code, which dealt with street permits and inspections. Um, there were various sections of chapter 12 that referred to permits and inspections and fees, but those fees weren't listed or established anywhere. So we would like to go ahead and establish those now and get those in the code so that we can start um, correctly charging for those. And then there were a couple of other changes um, in chapters 15 through 17 with community development, but they were limited, um, just a few, you know, uh, housekeeping type things. Um, I think we increased some of the big plotter copying costs just because we weren't recouping the cost. Um, and I think that's about it. And I'm happy to answer any questions. Questions or comments? Um, when I was reading over the, the fees, they talked about the vector truck and the camera truck. How often do we use those? Or does the public have to pay for those? Those are typically, those are typically during construction. Uh, of uh, where the city needs to go in and inspect the camera or clean the, the new line uh, for the camera inspection. So typically that's when it's done. Okay. Unless for some reason somebody just wanted to, um, but typically we don't do that. It's just if, if there was a broken line or something and we needed to find out. Okay. Well, I believe historically we've actually had to calculate it manually for everybody that does it. So with an hourly rate and the time that they used the equipment. So we're just trying to simplify it here by putting it at a flat. You, you know, I, I understand. I understand what you're doing. I, it was just the fact that uh, I, I didn't see how, how, why, or when you would, you would be called on for that service. So you answered my question. Thank you. Further questions or comments? Hearing no questions or comments, what is the desire of the council on this item? Move to approve. I'll second. We've got a motion by Councilor Hicks, second by Councilor Ripley to adopt an ordinance updating the schedule of fees and charges listed in SMC 2.02.020. Is there debate on this item? Hearing none, all in favor of approving this motion, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, no. I also vote aye. The motion passes. Thank you. Budget, budget amendment number two, considering adopting an ordinance amending the 2023 budget. Madam City Manager. Again, I'll turn this over to Ms. Horner for staff report. Ms. Horner. Thank you very much. Um, this is our second budget amendment for fund year or for fiscal year 2023. Um, it's not super huge. The bottom line change to our expected ending fund balance is just about $315,000. Um, the change does encompass adding some revenues that we hadn't expected or that were higher than expected and increasing expenditures based on previous um, items that council has approved or um, updated uh, forecasts and the like. And I'm happy to answer any questions for any of these items as well. Council, questions for Ms. Horner. Hearing no questions, what is the desire on uh, council on this item? Move to approve. Second. That was Mr. Farmer. All right, motion by Councilor Ripley, second by Councilor Farmer to adopt an ordinance amending the 2023 budget. Is there debate on this item? Hearing none. All in favor of approving this motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. I two vote aye. Motion passes. Item D, city manager contract. Consider approving an amendment to the city manager's Elizabeth Alba's contract. Ms. Alba. 
So there are five minor changes that um, I would like to request. Um, one of them is the to take out the salary dollar amount and put it to the according to the classification and compensation schedule adopted by city council. That way, if the amount changes in that document, it doesn't have to be reflected in this contract. Um, number two, change the personal vehicle stipend from 300 to 400 uh, as agreed in the spring of 2023. Remove the city shall provide financial support to allow manager to attempt to obtain the Association of Washington City Certificate of Municipal Leadership by December 31st, 2023. I am not eligible to get this certificate. And, um, remove residency requirements. Uh, this has been changed in our state law, so um, I'm allowed to live within certain distance, um, but it's not really a stated inside city limits anymore, so we can remove that section. And then added a vacation buyout of 40 hours per year. And specifically, I have to have taken 40 hours of vacation and have to have a balance of 40 hours in order to cash that out. So in dollars, it's about $6,600. All right, council members, questions or comments from Ms. Alba? And other city employees, they're, uh, they're able to... Uh do the vacation buyout? Yes, I actually copied the language from the police guilds um, contract. So I took theirs and instead of 48 hours, I put 40 because that's my work week. So I, I actually just really cut and pasted it right out of the contract. So I'd be exactly as they are. Okay, thanks. Further questions or comments? Mr. Mayor, I would move to amend uh, approve the amendment of the city manager's contract, Elizabeth Alba's contract. Very good. I'll second it. All right. We've got a motion by Deputy Mayor Rastucci to approve the amendment to the city manager's contract. We've got a second by Ms. Ripley. Is there a debate on this item? Hearing none, what is the desire of council on this item? I'm sorry, all in favor of. This motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, no. I too vote aye. Motion passes. Items from council members. Mayor's appointments for boards and commissions. We have one vacancy on the Economic Development Committee, and I have heard of nobody applying for that position yet, and so that position is open. Um, I do have a pending meeting. We have to set a date with the committee that's going to review the applications to look over everybody who is on the committee who's up, whose turn is up and contact all of them. Um, I received the, the paperwork from the city clerk. However, I went on vacation. And so while on vacation, I don't know how everybody else does it, but I don't do an awful lot of work. Mr. Mayor. So, Mr. Deputy Mayor. Yes, sir. Um, uh, Mr. Farmer and I and you will, will meet here shortly for a rules committee meeting. Um, and we can start going over applications for boards and commissions. That is correct, sir. Thank you for that. And if anybody knows of anybody who wishes to apply, please encourage them to do so. Um, they can do so by contacting the city clerk or by getting on the city webpage and get all the help they need in the application. All right, item B, council request status report. Madam city manager. So we have no changes on any of the items and um, really with the changes in leadership team, I would like to regroup on all of these items and make sure that we have the right people in the right spots to get this stuff working because Rawls kind of on his first day <laughs> and we have we don't have a permanent fire chief at this moment. So when we can get those two positions in place, then we'll we'll tackle this again. Council, what are the feelings on that? Is there any objection? Without objection, it's approved. Thank you. And I know Raul, your learning curve is about vertical, especially starting today. It's going to be an exciting couple of weeks until you feel like you've got your feet under you, but uh, confident in you. Other reports, announcements, and or questions by council. And Mr. Hicks, we're gonna give you a chance to go first today. Uh, what are we doing on our vacancy? How many applications do we have? We have received three applications. I've heard a rumor of somebody who's interested, but it was just a name and there was no other information. So I, I have nothing to report. And we would like to get somebody in that position, obviously sooner rather than later. 
So if you know of anybody who will be running the show for the rest of the year, um, please have them contact myself or the manager, and we will get that process started. I do have a call from one of the candidates and uh, wanting to fill in that position. However, I, I told him that council had agreed that if the if there's a opponent from that position, if there's two people running for that position, it was kind of appear to be showing favoritism to that one person to give them the position. I understand legal has determined that's probably not necessarily the case. It was okay if we would appoint somebody from that pool. But I think as council, we all kind of agreed that we felt that it would be showing some sort of favoritism or could be perceived that way, and we chose not to do that. So um, that individual was enthusiastic about serving that position, but um, understanding also when I explained why we chose not to do that. So. Ms. Ripley. I went to the national night outs and uh, they were pretty good. I went to the one at the park on Tuesday night and that was really nice. The pool was just full. And uh, then I went to the one at the uh, community center at, on Friday night and that one was really neat too. Big old helicopter there. <laughs> good. Glad to hear that. I was unable to attend by virtue of the fact that I wasn't in town, but I saw all the posts on Facebook and it seemed to be very well received and very well done. So when when I when I'm in town, I like to go to those. But when one makes vacation plans, there's what they call an opportunity cost, where I took the opportunity to go away and I had to pay the cost of not being able to attend the, the event. So Mr. Farmer. We had an LTAC meeting. Uh, we reviewed all of the proposals. Uh, this coming Friday, uh, we will make our choice. Very good. And Mr. Deputy Chair. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, just one item. Just want to uh, thank uh, the city manager for attending the uh, Yakima Valley uh, Crime Lab <clears throat> uh, grand opening and, and ribbon cutting. Um, I want to let everyone know that as of the 7th of August, we started processing cases. So the lab is open and for business. I want to thank everyone for their support on that. Thank you, sir. And for myself, I was gone for two weeks, and so I missed out on an awful lot of what was going on. I, I'm equally excited as Mr. Rasucci about the crime lab. That's something that both of us had supported wholeheartedly over the last while, and we were very excited to see that get voted in and approved and funded and now functioning. And I think it is going to be a phenomenal asset to our area, to local law enforcement and has the potential to set an example for the rest of the state on how we can possibly do this and work together as communities. So I am, I'm pretty excited about that whole thing. It's, uh, and, it's and just actually, a great Mr. project. Mayor, um, just so for your information, so you're aware and council's aware, uh, Congressman Newhouse shared with us at the event that this is the first in the nation crime lab like this. And that is exciting too. We, are, we have that opportunity to be a trendsetter nationally. So that's really cool. Item B, upcoming council meetings. Madam City Manager. And I will turn this over to Deputy Clerk Mariseda. Okay. So coming up on August 28th, the regular meeting, um, you'll be on the agenda will be the LTAC funding recommendations. Um, it'll be Teamsters Union 760 supervisor contract and also classifications and compensation schedules for CPAs and positions. Very good. <clears throat> and if anybody has items that need to be added to the agenda, please get that to the clerk or the manager or myself as soon as possible in order to get that included right away. Items from department heads, Madam City Manager. And I'm going to start at the end with the acting fire chief and then let's let you guys staff report across. All right, uh, year to date now emergency responses were at 2,736 responses, which again puts us about 100 uh, ahead of the former year trend. Um, the last two weeks since our last uh, official council meeting, we did run 187. Um, and uh, as we continue our, our training during the summer, even in the heat, we're uh, up to um, just shy of 1,700 training hours for the department for this year. So really excited about that and have quite a few more trainings up and coming that uh, we'll add those numbers and add to our skill set as a department. Uh, that's all I have unless you have any questions. 
Thank you. Um, as far as administrative services, um, I just wanted to remind you that it's budget season, yay. And so we have our first budget workshop scheduled for Saturday the 26th um, at 9 a.m. to noon at the community center. And so um, it'll just be a, a sort of an overview of the process where we're at, where we're starting, um, making sure that everyone's on the, page, the same page with some of the assumptions that we're starting with. And then we'll get that ball rolling. Fun, fun. Thank you. So I'll update you on a couple uh, projects. Uh, Sixth Street Roadway will be open this Wednesday, uh, awaiting railroad authorization. So there'll be, there'll still be some gravel uh, in the area of the roadway until we get that squared away. Uh, and then the second project is going to start August 21st, which is the YVH. Uh, grind and overlay. Uh, that's starting August 21st um, and roadway will be open during construction. Good. Excited about that Sixth Street project getting finished. Good evening, City Council. Uh, so I have a few things for you. Uh, we have a new, we had a new planner starting on August 1st. I'm very excited. Um, so she's getting acclimated to the area and to the processes of the city of Sunnyside. So um, she's very um, enthusiastic and ready to learn. So I'm kind of showing her the ropes. Um, so over the month of uh, July, I'll kind of read you from some stats here from our code enforcement. We started abating, so we started abating two different houses. Um, we've been working with some with some people removing all of the scrap metal from, from the houses and getting it ready for, for um, demolition abatement. Um, so we've been doing that, and one of them is at 317, 1317 Harrison, and then I believe it's 619 South 9th, I believe is the, the other two property addresses. Um, so that's kind of been a, a fun and interesting task um, over the course of July. Um, but as far as depart, depart, the kind of going through here, code enforcement's had 11 department assists, um, 32, there's been a lot of parking and car and car and abandoned vehicle stuff this, this last month or in the, through the month of July. Um, 32 parking, 24 weeds and grass, seven yard sale. Um, that one's gotten a lot better. Um, 21 citizen complaint, 25 abandoned vehicles, uh, 10 instances of graffiti, 16 follow ups, um, 10 notice of issue, 10 notice of violations issued. 10 citizen assists and 23 officer generated cases. So they've been running around trying to get people to clean up their stuff. So, and and um, we have received, I just wanna put this on your radar. We did receive um, a couple complaints. There is a um, some stuff out in front of the side and on the sidewalk kind of drilled into the sidewalk a little bit in front of um, a, a um, Rest sports bar downtown that should be removed this week. It's either going to be today, tonight, or tomorrow. So it should be, and then repairing any sort of sidewalk damage that happened. Yes. Nothing think at this time, unless someone has questions. Questions for Mr. Riley? All right. Deputy City Clerk. Yeah. Okay. So on the, um, in front of you, you'll see a AWC article, um, how to run a council meeting with Jurassic Parliament. And I wanted uh, council to read over this. I would like to request um, either as part of the budget process or um, kind of moving forward, I'd like to offer this same kind of council uh, training possibly in January, if we have any new members that come on board. And then I would also like to offer this up to all of our subcommittees for their attendance. And um, I think it's really um, a good way for people to understand their role in on the council and understand um, kind of what they do uh, for us. So um, I just wanted to let council have it. I will be asking for this um, in our budget workshop. And I did not provide Mr. Restucci a copy because he could probably teach this course for us. <laughs> I would agree. And then um, one other item, I will be taking a vacation next week and I'm going to really turn off my cell phone. Um, I will be putting uh, Trevor Martin in charge 
and he knows where I live and can get a hold of me if something, if the place is burning down or we have a catastrophe, but I'm actually going to really take a, a breather next week. So just wanted to let council know. And that's all I have. All right. Thank you. A couple of things came to my mind uh, after, I know I should have said it during item C up above, but uh, a couple of things came to my mind. Number one, while over the course of my vacation, I had a conversation with two retired wildland firefighter experts. Um, I spent a lot of years in that. And in listening to them talk and getting insight from them, I became very impressed with the quality of our fire department. Um, our firefighters have been well trained. They know how to respond. And anything I heard from these two individuals, again, retired wildland firefighters and some of the stuff they had to say, um, I think our firefighters are well ahead of that. So well done to everyone involved in the training. You can pass that on from me. And secondly, well, formally, I would like to welcome you to your position. I know this is a big step. I made a comment about it earlier. Um, you would have been put here if you were not felt to be capable for this job. I know Mr. Fisher will be missed, but we also wish him well in his new position in Grandview and um, look forward to all the work that you're going to be able to do and help us get done. You've got a lot of good people working with you. And so wish you the best in this job. All right. If there's no further business to come before council, if there's no objection, I join this meeting at 7.02 p.m. Thank you, everybody. Good night, everyone. Good night, Mr. Rastucci.